What constitutes a safe roofing specification? Correct product selection. Not all membranes are suitable for hot air or self-adhesive application. Specially trained roofing operatives. Few roofers will be properly skilled in these specific operations. The correct tools are critical. These are not standard roofing equipment. No flame equals no risk. Hot air activated and or self-adhesive products require all of the aforementioned crucial elements. Correct product selection, fully competent specially trained operatives and the correct tools. Tricky and awkward to access details can be dealt with close up with no risk allowing the operative to ensure full waterproof seals are obtained. So when do you need a safe roofing specification? Wherever you consider there is a fire risk. The National Federation of Roofing Contractors has produced a safe roofing specification checklist which our company is proud to have assisted in drawing up. This list is not exhaustive however and is only intended as a general guide. Insist on a fire risk survey by a suitably competent person to be included in any roof condition survey or remedial specification proposal. Typical high risk areas include confined spaces, cavity trays, perp ends, cladding junctions, pitched roof junctions, openings such as roof lights and low sill details, exposed timber and combustible material of any kind. Safe roofing specifications. Are they more expensive? Yes. Are they slower? Yes. Are they insurable? Yes. Are they the lowest risk to property and life? Yes and yes. So now you've seen how it should be done. Shall we take a look at what's more often the case? Risky roofing specifications. Are you serious? Would anyone really do this? Would anyone really specify this? The answer is unfortunately yes. And the result too often catastrophic. Often when the fire first starts, the roofer remains unaware. Observe how behind the cladding the fire has really taken hold. Continuing to propagate. Take heed of how, given the difficult access, this fire would be very difficult to extinguish once started. Viewed from the roofing side, the operative remains largely unaware of the imminent disaster he's just created. In close-up, you can see how the fire continues to burn after the roofer has left sight. Even when the roofer attempts to reduce the risk by preheating the membrane away from the high risk area, it soon becomes apparent that in order to ensure a waterproof seal can be made, it's still necessary to apply the flame directly to the point of high risk. The center of this flame could reach 1900 degrees centigrade or 3600 degrees Fahrenheit. Crucially, you'll see that the flame cannot be sensitively regulated. Trigger controls are jerky and are operator reliant. Wind factors will have an effect and can cause unexpected loss of control. Smoke can now be clearly seen at the tiled ridge, though again the roofer continues to work as he's not yet aware he has just set fire to the building. Under slatings and backings quickly ignite and are destroyed as the fire gains a hold. In a real life situation on an old roof, you could expect to find dust, vermin, nests and debris, build-ups of highly flammable materials hidden behind the tiling.